Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use Vaadin's new client-side forms to really simplify that the way that we're doing the data binding. So to explain to you better what I mean, let's jump into the code and look. OK, so up until now, the way we've been dealing with data binding is that we have our field, and we listen for input values. We have a method here that updates a name property based on that event, and we're kind of manually taking care of this. It's something that works pretty well, or OK, at least, once if we only have like one or two fields. But as we begin to have more fields, if we have more validations or things like that, it just doesn't scale very well, and it becomes a lot of work. So I want to show you how we can use the new bottom client side forms to really simplify this. To do that, let's jump into our backend code to the person model and add some more things in here. So I want to add three more fields, email, shoe size, and birth date. So go ahead and add a string for email. An integer for shoe size. And a local date for birth date. Then let's go ahead and create getters and setters for all of these. And define some constraints on them. So we want to validate that people are doing the right thing, entering the right thing in our form. So let's say that name should not be blank. Email should also not be blank, but it should also be formatted like an email. Shoe size should be a positive number, and birth date should be in the past and not null. All right. Then let's jump into our endpoint code and change the way this save person works. So right now we're taking in a name, we're creating a new person, adding them, and then returning that new person. We can remove this and instead expect to get in a person object like this. We add them to the list and then return them. This is simulating a real life situation where we would probably save this person to a database and the returned person from there would have probably an ID or something generated. So we would want to return that to the client. Okay, so we'll save that and then we will go into our view code here. Okay, so now we can go ahead and remove everything that has to do with us manually tracking the state of anything related to the value here. So go ahead and remove that. We don't need to update the name ourselves anymore. We need to remember to come back to this uh, a little bit later. But before then, let's go ahead and take care of something. So first of all, I want to import some more UI components for us. Uh, so we have text field, but let's import some more specific fields. So we'll want email field, and we want an integer field so that we have shoe sizes. And then we want to have a date picker for that birth date. Got in date picker, that one. So with those in place, now we can go ahead and create something called a binder, which is kind of where all the magic happens when it comes to data binding in Vaadin. So we'll create a field, it can be a private field, binder, and then we'll instantiate a new binder. This takes in two things. We'll take in the context, the element, which is this, and then a model, which describes what we're binding to. In our case, we're binding to a person and Vaadin will automatically also generate this person model, which is a description of that person's data type and all the validations and everything that we have for that person. So what we want to do here in our template is first of all, uh, generate or create the fields for everything. And then we want to use the binder to bind uh, to those. So to bind to them, we'll need to get a hold of the model from that binder. So I'm going to destructure that out here in the beginning of the render method just to make it easier for us down the road. So const model is equal to this dot 
binder. If you're not familiar with this syntax, essentially this is just pulling the binder uh, binders model property into a into a variable for us here. The actual binding looks like this. So we use a syntax that's uh, three dots, and then we bind to an expression. This is a destructuring syntax, meaning that whatever we return from here, however many properties will get bound at the same time. So instead of us having to set three or four or five separate properties, we can just set all of them in one go. And there is a helper called field in this, uh, in this form package that will do exactly that. So if we pass in the models uh, correct field here, it will generate all the properties that need to get bound and the destructuring syntax here will take care of them actually uh, working the way that we want. So that takes care of the name field. The next one we wanna add is the email field. Again, this one will have a label and the data binding will look the same. So we'll use the field helper and then we'll pass in model and we can see the different properties we have on it. We wanna to bind to email. We'll do the same again for the shoe size. So we'll do bought in integer field and give it a label shoe size and then bind to it field model dot shoe size and finally that date picker bought in date picker give it a label Uh, birth date and bind it field model dot birth date like that. All right, let's save this. Right now it's probably going to fail because I forgot to do exactly what I said we needed to do, which is to go back here and change this. So if you remember, we changed what the save person takes in from being a string to the person. So we need to change this. Instead of calling save person ourself, we're going to go through the binder. So we're going to call this dot binder dot submit to, and then pass in this save person method here. And then what we can do here is see that if we have something that was saved returned to us, then we can add them. Still have an error here, and that's because we are importing something that we're not using and that causes an error to be shown. All right. So let's try this out now. So if we enter something here, you can see that, or you might have seen that there's a little dot here indicating that it's required. If I type something in, it goes away. Likewise, email, if I type in something, it goes away. If I try to go away too soon, not putting in a valid email, you can see that we get an error message here. So let's do Marcus, Marcus at Vauden.com. Birth date. Hmm, we're actually missing the oh. integer. Oh man, that is some horrible typing. There we go. All right, so let's try this again. So Marcus. Marcus at Vaden.com. Not allowed to put in negative numbers. That's good. Um, put in a birth date. Press add. And you can see that that actually worked. Okay. So let's go ahead and make sure that we actually were able to save all of those. So instead of right now, what we're doing is we're printing out just the name. Let's do a pre tag here and then do a json.stringify. We'll take the uh, 
person does null to, so we'll format this like that. Let's see what happens. OK, so now you can see that uh, all of that got saved from the field here. Uh, final thing that we might have wanted to do here is call this dot binder dot clear once we're done saving so we clear out all the fields here. Okay, so that's it for forms. If you have any questions, ask them below. In the next video, we're going to take a look at some CSS and styling. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.